and welcome to a millinery trimmings video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I will be demonstrating several techniques that you can use to make couture fabric flowers without flower tools. If you end up making or experimenting with any of the things I demonstrate in today's video, share it with me on Instagram, at Millinery. I'd love to see all your creations. Also, if you have a request for a video, please let me know in the comments below. Today I'm going to show you three completely different techniques. First, we will look at rolled edged silk organza roses. Then we will use cotton organdy to make poppies. And lastly, we'll make some pansies out of wide ribbon. Just remember, this is my preferred method. There is no right or wrong way, just whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and make a start on flower number one. For a comprehensive list of tools and materials, as well as some suggested suppliers, please see the description box below. Here are the flower petal patterns. Take a screenshot and print them off. We will need to cut the petals out on the bias. If you don't know what the bias is, it's just the 45 degree diagonal angle from the straight edge of the fabric. Cutting petals on the bias means the edges are less likely to fray. You will need 5 large, 4 medium and 4 small. I know it can be difficult to find coloured silk organza, so I'll link to last week's video on using dyes in millinery in the card at the top right. Now let's prep the stem. Roll the cotton wool into a tube. Bend the wire in half and trap the cotton wool tube in the fold. Make sure it is secure. You've essentially made a cotton bud, but don't stick this one in your ears. Next, you will need a small square of organza as well as a little bias strip. Use the square piece to cover your cotton bud. Then, fold the bias strip and wrap it around the cotton bud. Make sure when you stitch these, your stitches are right at the base of the cotton wool. And now to shape the petals. We are going to roll the top and sides of each one. This can be fiddly, but the best way I've found to do it is to trap a small fold of the organza between my thumb and forefinger and roll it back and forth until a small tight roll forms. The first small petals that go into the centre of the rose should have the rolled edges pointing inwards, the rest point outwards. As you attach the petal to the cotton bud, pleat the bottom. This gives the petal a cut shape and makes it more realistic. The small and medium petals need to be attached in a criss-cross pattern. The five large petals should then be placed evenly in a circle overlapping each other. And here it is, the finished rose. Stick around to the end of the video where I will discuss ways in which this rolled edge technique can be modified for different flowers. Flower number two, a cotton organdy poppy. First off, I'm going to show you how to make these stamens. However, you can just buy these if you want to save time. Wrap the thread around the frame, securing it with knots at the start and end. Try to make sure your threads aren't too close together, otherwise it will be difficult to do the next step. Mix the PVA with some black paint and paint all over the threads. You may want to do two coats of the PVA glue mixture. Just make sure each coat is dry before applying the next one. Once dry, cut off the frame and cut to size. I'm making mine 6.5 cm. You can cut them to any size you want, just don't go for larger than 9 cm. Make a stand for the stamens to dry out of the A4 paper. Mix a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch with a quarter teaspoon of PVA and add some black paint. You are aiming for the consistency of toothpaste, so you may need to add more or less of each ingredient. Coat each stamen using a toothpick. If you want bigger stamens, you will need to coat them again and again, letting them dry in between each application to build up the layers. Now that you've got your stamens, let's make the petals. You will need to cut out four small petals and four medium petals, all on the bias, just like the organza rose flower. It's so much easier to cut the cotton organdy as it is stiffer than the organza. All the petals are cut out, and now it's time for the shaping. 
I'm using the damp cloth rolling method to achieve a crinkled effect. First, I dampen my muslin cloth. Make sure to really wring it out, it needs to be just damp and definitely not sopping wet. Then, I take a petal, fold it in half and place it onto the bias of my muslin cloth. Fold the muslin cloth over, roll it up into a tube and twist and pull outwards until it's really, really tight. Now, gently unravel the cloth, take out the petal and really lightly, so as not to spoil the crinkles, open it out and let it dry. London is going through a bit of a heat wave at the moment, so my petals dried almost instantly. Next, you will need to make the centre of the poppy flower. I've cut four lengths of the beading wire about 16 centimetres long. Bend the wire in half and trap 16 stamens in that fold. Use pliers and or tweezers to twist the wire to secure. Do this four times. Then cut a 20 cm piece of the cotton covered wire and thread it through the two holes in your button. Twist to secure. Overlay some cotton wool and the black fabric over the top. Stitch it in place, then cut off the excess. Attach the stamen wires to underneath the button, once again twisting to hold in place. The stamens should fan outwards from under the button. And now to assemble my poppy. Do it the same way as for the rose, in a crisscross pattern, starting with the four small petals, then offsetting the four medium petals. You will need to give them a cupped shape. To do this, gently pull from the center outwards. Don't overdo this though, as you can damage the crinkle effect. Here is the finished poppy. To see some variations and what else you can do with this technique, stick around to the end of the video. The last flower is super easy but very fiddly. Cut 5 10 cm lengths of the ribbon. Be careful not to pull on the wires as we will need those for later. Gather 2 lengths on the dark side and 3 lengths on the light side. To secure the gather, I'm knotting the wires and pulling tight. Once you've got all your petals, it's time to assemble. Twist together the two dark gathered sides and open them outwards. Add on one light gathered side petal and open it forwards. Then twist the remaining two light gathered sides together. To achieve the pansy shape, the two petals will need to be attached slightly higher than the three main petals. Use a beading needle to tack the ungathered edges of the ribbon to the centres. Then add as many seed beads as you want. And that's it, the pansies are done. And now, as promised, let's talk a little bit about variations you might want to try. First off, petal variations. Apart from the obvious size and shape changes to the petal before cutting them out, you can also modify the shape after assembling the whole flower. To get the spiky jagged edged petals like on this peony, snip at the edges of the silk organza rose. You can also choose to make your flower fuller by adding more small and medium sized petals to the centre. 
To get a two-tone color on each petal, like on this briar rose, you can get silk paints that are heat set and hand paint the edge or center of each petal before shaping. I think you can even make your own silk paint using the Jacquard acid dyes from last week's video, but I haven't experimented with this yet, so I'm not sure how that works. You can also use this two-tone effect to add extra depth to petals by painting a dark gradient at the base, just like I did for this poppy over here. With the crinkled petal, you can control how wrinkly you want it to be. If you roll a smaller, thinner roll, you will end up with more closely spaced wrinkles. If you want fewer and wider spaced crinkles, make a larger roll. The ombre ribbon petals can be arranged into any flower shape you want. It doesn't have to be a peony and you can make smaller petals by changing the length of ribbon. The smallest I tried was 7cm, but that was super super fiddly to put together, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. The last thing you can vary is the stamens at the flower center. The stamens we made in this video dried matte because of the acrylic paint. If you want them shiny, just paint them with nail polish once they are dry. If you want to keep them matte but change the color, just paint over them in acrylic paint, or use that acrylic paint color when you are initially making them. If you don't want stamens, you can use seed beads instead. You could take the button center we did for this poppy and sew the seed beads to cover the whole of it. And of course, you could vary the size of the button. But what if you don't want stamens at all? Well, you can use frayed Petersham ribbon, just like I used on this mini poppy. Or you can use frayed cinnamon and decide on what length you want it, like I've done on this big poppy. Incidentally, inside this big poppy I've used the same kind of bud as in the organza rose. To finish off, we can't have a millinery video that doesn't talk about maths. Those of you who are fans of maths like me will have noticed something very special about the number of petals on each flower that we have made today. That's right, they're all numbers from the Fibonacci sequence. This is a special sequence of numbers where the next number is always the sum of the two previous numbers. We see this in nature all the time, so if you are making a flower and aren't sure about how many petals to give it, look at the Fibonacci sequence. Thank you so much for exploring No Tool Couture Fabric Flowers with me. I've left some links to a couple of free books on the subject of flower making in the description box below. If you end up making the flowers I've shown you in this video, share them with me on Instagram, at Bialona Millinery. I would love to see how they turn out. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. See you next time. Bye. To snip. <laughs> or not to snip. Can you leave the cat alone? Can we have silence in the studio? And so. The line.